Okay, well I got things a little bit rearranged in here. I got my, um, we'll call it new trailer in here. And I made this jig to fit the um, bunks on the old trailer. And so, um, on this, this red trailer. And so now I have the boat switched back and empty on this yellow trailer. And now you'll notice that um, I set these, these little uh, uprights so that they would um, stand off of the frame rail right next to that diamond plate there, that frame rail on the, the old trailer. But obviously the new trailer has a little wider track because these go on the inside. So what I'm gonna do is um, just move these outboard just enough so that they sit right on top of this rail right here. And uh, then I can actually sit this apparatus right on there and then I can get my bunks mounted up and all the other um, further things I need to do. Well just like that with some uh, movie magic here we got the, the whole structure raised up. So now you'll notice that those um, 2x4s are at least sitting on top of those frame rails right there and over there. And so uh, don't critique, critique me for my carpentry skills. But you'll notice that's the difference of, you know, how close those original bunks were to the frame versus my other trailer had some pretty significant stilts on it. You know, those are, those are pretty tall in comparison to uh, the ones that, that were on, the, on this trailer. So my plan now is to take these bunks, the two that are on this trailer, off and attach them where those tick marks are on the bottom of these... Uh, these little diagonal pieces and then that will basically hold them right where I need them to be and then I can make the feet um, basically be perfect. I just got done <clears throat> grinding down all the little mounts that were on there. Those are all ripped off of there, hammered off of there, however it came and so there's a few spots on this weld and that weld over there that I'd like to kind of touch up so I already took it to the the boat ramp so I know it's gonna hold but uh, cosmetically I wasn't crazy about it and so I'm going to uh, kind of touch those up really quick and then finish out the grinding for now All right, well after lots of grinding and farting around there, I think I got this the way I want it. And so um, both, the, both the, the cuts are kind of ground down and prepped up. Um, they're not perfect, but good enough for what I got going on here. And so now I think finally uh, I can move the little structure piece back and start working with the bunks. Well, I got uh, my bunks laid out here. <clears throat> and so I first time I used zip ties to kind of get a feel for where I wanted it because I kind of reset it a few times. And then I just towed in, you can see I just towed screws in all the way along here through the carpet to hold um, the bunks up. So now they're hovering basically perfectly in place where I want them to be. So now all I have to do is make legs, which uh, sounds easy, but it's gonna take a minute. Okay, well there's a little progress here. I got uh, a few of these stands tacked on. And so you can see they're coming up to rise and meet the um, bunks right where they are. And actually this one I got uh, welded on there. A little bit of a booger weld there, but I think it's gonna work. And so welded it all the way around. And then basically I'm gonna finish out this row. I got four done, two more to do. Then a whole nother six and two more. So quite a bit of work here to do. But uh, these these ones are gonna kind of suck. They're on the, it'll be on the, like underneath there. It's gonna um, kind of suck to do. So I think I'll just tack them in. Now I finally have all of the stands for the um, bunks all at least welded into their position. So these are, these are welded solid and these ones underneath here are all tacked. So now um, with the bunks 
where they can be. Now I can pull this wood structure off and start contorting myself underneath here to get these actually welded in. And uh, I may actually, I may take the bunks off because they don't need to be on there either really. Um, so that I can get the stands welded up and ground out really nice. So anyway, that's the, that's the plan. It sure looks like that other trailer. Um, I would say that the, the bunks are on there, uh, you know, visually nicely. They look really good. They're straight. Uh, they all have basically, again, this, this angle iron with um, little uh, uh, topper plate, and those are all on there. And uh, hopefully it stays where it's supposed to be here. Okay, well everything's welded out now. Uh, I'll spare you the butt crack of me uh, rolling around underneath there. Uh, trying to get to all those little spots to weld. Um, what I lack in uh, welding technique, I made up for quantity here. So I welded basically everywhere I could. So uh, just to make sure some of my bird poop welds hold and everything. But uh, it was kind of challenging the vertical and uh, there were a couple overhead welds too, but uh, got it got it sorted I think and then ground down within you know reasonable expectations. So um, anyway, I got the bunks mounted on there with the screws, so they're uh, somewhat um, well not permanently installed, but um, good enough that I can try and test the boat. That's what uh, my next step will be: take it to the marina and see if I can swap the boat over, see how it sits. So um, hopefully that goes well, and uh, we have a, an improved. Um, lay of the land here. Okay, well we did a little transfer really quick and uh, basically tried uh, tried it on the new trailer and everything's sitting really nicely actually. It's sitting, you know, right right where I thought it would be and uh, the only the only issue is we still have to pull it forward a little bit. It's still sitting I guess a little too far back on the trailer, a little light on the tongue weight. And so uh, we'll make that adjustment. I think I'm going to kind of reconfigure uh, this section right here. And uh, I think I want to move forward about, about six inches. I think that'll help quite a bit, maybe more in the eight range, but something like that. Okay, so the boat's on the yellow trailer here. Everything sits fine, bunks look good and everything. So kind of the next step is to get this fender situation sorted out. These are a Jeep style fender. That's what um, trailer people call them and because uh, they're like the squared off um, kind of ugly looking ones but um, it's, this is you know still past COVID times here so uh, a regular boat fender is well over you know $150 and you know uh, days away whereas I was able to go to the local trailer so, uh, builder actually this place makes like dump trailers and stuff and they just had a rack of these sitting there um, so those are 90 bucks for each one so 180 between the pairs. I didn't think that was too bad, and they're uh, quite a bit heavier gauge than what you would find on a boat trailer normally. So that's good, because I'm a uh, husky at least. Commercial trailers come with um, bigger tires and wheels on them than what you see here, so there's a little more room in this fender than I'd like, so I'm gonna, gonna chop off about uh, four inches right here at the bottom. Okay, well, I got the uh, five inches taken off that I, I wanted to get off of it. I think it looks okay. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing, cut five inches off the other fender, and uh, we can go from there. Okay, so I hoisted uh, this sheet metal up onto the sawhorses here, and you can see a line right there. That's the profile of the um, fender, and I just traced the, the inside lip, and you can see it, it crosses back over here. And ends and so basically I'm gonna roughly um, offset from this about like a quarter inch and cut all the way around bigger than that mark and that's so that when I, I get this cut out actually then I can um, put it inside this fender and put little welds right on the back here to weld it in there <clears throat> I won't I won't weld around it all the way solid but um, just little stitches here and there All right, well, I got my backing plate set into the fender here, 
and I got the, the fender and, and the plate, of course, kind of cleaned off. So I'm going to go and um, buzz a few welds on here, and hopefully it doesn't uh, get weird and start warping or doing, doing anything else, but uh, we'll try it out and see how it goes. Alright, so went around here and did a, a couple welds, nothing too serious or too pretty either, but uh, it'll hold on there I think. Alright, well I got this fender sitting on here, obviously it's now got a bunch of weight on the back of it so it's not sitting quite straight here, but I got a, a, a measurement from the frame rail, so from the top of that frame rail to the top of that fender I'll do 8 inches. So that'll make sure that the fender is aligned with the trailer regardless of whether we have more ass weight or front weight here it's just gonna work so that's that's what I got going on and I I like the amount of clearance I have here because um, you notice the shrouding portion of the um, bottom the back piece of the fender does not extend quite down enough to hit the frame so then therefore I know that the axles will never come up and hit it the next area that I have to work with here is the bow eye and bow rest area and so um, basically what I need to do is move that forward um, probably four to six inches somewhere in that range because the basically the boat is sitting too far back on the trailer it has I can lift it get under here and lift it up with one hand so it's it's pretty light on the front of the trailer I got the bow eye cut off now, so I got I got things cleaned up as far as the the uh, remaining welds is concerned. So now I'm going to try and scoot it forward on the um, on the trailer. We'll see if this come along d will do the job, but I, I think it might. So there we go. Now you can see we're you know flush or a little bit under actually on the length, and so it probably pulled it up. Uh, I would say in the four to six range, something like that inches. So uh, I'm just going to leave this come along on here and we're going to go to the dock and put it on the red trailer so that I can start making some more um, permanent changes, fenders get on, masks put on, all that good stuff. So um, here we go. I have my new fender again that I welded the backs in and then I went to work and I found on the scrap pile uh, in the tool room just like a little 8 inch um, piece and conveniently 8 inches is the height from the top of that frame rail to the top of the fender that's 8 inches and there we got uh, that same 8 inch dimension there so I'm going to cut some pieces of angle and then use that that piece which is square as a, uh, a guide to kind of get those um, little supports welded on there and then uh, I'll know that the top of that support has to be at the top of that frame rail and that should make uh, mounting it up a little easier so I could just kind of eyeball it and hold it up there and tack it really quick rather than getting precise with the tape measure and whatnot. All right, well I got the welder set up and I'm about ready to at least tack this on here. But you can see what I was getting at with that 8 inch dimension. Made that a lot easier. And then I have my, my distance set here of inch and three quarter. And so I'm going to at least, at least tack it on there and on the other side and then I'll kind of hold it up there and see how it fits. Alright, so we got this, this kind of in place here and uh, going to tack it on and see, see how it fits. I did have to clearance the back here. Um, because I missed that in my measurement, the brake caliper. So I think we got that uh, all cleared up now. All right, and with some movie magic, I got the fenders welded on here now. And so it's uh, not the finest welds you ever saw, but uh, a little grinder and uh, some paint eventually will turn this out uh, pretty okay, I think. Uh, I was waiting for leaf springs to come in and they showed up today. So before I put this uh, fender on, I'm going to um, undo these leaf springs while I have a little room to operate. I kind of wish I would have waited on that one, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to take out a bolt right there. I already did, already did take out one. 
here, here, the U-bolts, same thing on the other side, both axles, and uh, that's what we're gonna do to get these leaf springs changed out to a, it's actually a little bit higher uh, spring rate uh, than what they are right now. All right, well, it was uh, quickly apparent that it was easier to just take the entire axle out and work on it like this rather than fight with it in the trailer. So as luck would have it here, I got my uh, my uh, old springs sitting here and my new springs sitting here. And you can see when I put them next to each other that uh, the one has not near enough height compared to the other one. The yellow ones are taller springs than the black ones. And you know, uh, Amazon is not known for their um, listing details. And so this is what you get. So um, on the old spring over there, you can see the spring goes under the axle and so my solution here is to have the spring go over top of the axle so I flip the axle over so now the perch is facing up and uh, I'm gonna try that out I don't really see any huge consequence to doing that right now um, but we're gonna try it it might be actually too much lift because you're basically gonna get the spring pack thickness plus two inches which that's only like an inch difference so I, I don't know we'll see so anyway, I got one set up there. I got new U-bolts um, tightened down, and then I'm gonna do it do it on this side here too. And then the only real modification that I have to make is the end of that bolt, right at the very, very top of the bolt. There you have to grind it off a little bit so that's a little bit shorter because it's too too deep to go into that hole. Um, I got all my leaf springs put on here onto each axle and then I got them into place got the shackles bolted up and mounted everything's mounted where it's supposed to be you'll notice the obvious problem here is those u-bolts <laughs> are you know quite a bit longer than they have to be and uh, you can see here that if you look from the top down they will clear just barely so enough for a test drive um, I just don't want to cut them off and be like have to reconfigure again and wish they were longer So I'm gonna go for a test drive here. I think I'm gonna load the boat up another time Transfer it over to this trailer and just make sure everything uh, looks okay Okay, so my new springs are sitting on there now fenders both fenders are actually welded on and uh, We took the boat to the water and uh, tried it out and it seems to sit fine. That tire is too small right, right there. But uh, anyway, besides that little issue, it seems to sit fine. Uh, I have plenty of clearance between the boat and the fender. Obviously between the tire and the fender, I have a great plenty now. And so um, I'm you know, relatively pleased with that. So the, the next step and the reason the boat is still on the trailer is because I need to get the bow rest fitted here. And so um, basically I had uh, the old one I like kind of ground it off of there and cut cut it with the death wheel off of there and Zazal. And so I put some weld through primer on it. And so now I'm gonna go actually remove the um, bow rest from my old trailer and put it on here. Cause I like that one, it's got a better winch. I didn't want to swap winches. I don't really like the way this one, the yellow one sits on here. So, um, and actually it should clamp right onto, not clamp on, but, slide right over that uh, center beam right there. So we're gonna go grab it and see how it works. Well, here's my winch off of my other uh, red trailer. And so I went inside there and chewed out as much rust as I could get to with this Rolock uh, style uh, pistol. And anyway, so I got what I could and then uh, ran some primer over it again. So now I should be able to put it in position on the front of the boat and uh, get things situated. And so you'll see um, on my old trailer, the, the this bar right, right here was, was thinner. And so this actually, on the old trailer, those bolts went underneath and it kind of like clamped to it. Whereas now I would have to drill through holes uh, through the entire um, beam. So instead what I'm gonna do is probably just put a few welds on the outside here and just kind of mark where I want it to be. 
and, uh, and just weld it on there permanently. Okay, well I got that uh, bow rest um, welded on there now, and so it sits nice and natural. My my rest rubber there could probably use a replacement, but uh, this will work for now. And so I think the the next and um, getting to the end of the list here thing to do will be uh, putting the taillight buckets on. I have uh, these prefab uh, taillight buckets that I bought from a local uh, trailer manufacturer actually who does not work on boats, <laughs> boat trailers, otherwise I would have had him do it. But um, anyway, these are supposed to weld onto the side here and, uh, you know, prefab fit the uh, regular oval lights and then a side marker. And then this little hole is a pass through for wiring. So I'm probably gonna try and get those uh, welded on here and um, in their uh, final position. Basically all you have to do is drill uh, through the frame rail a, uh, a hole, I have a very faint circle there, that you can go ahead and weld this sucker up. So it's um, gonna have to be somewhat delicate because you have a big difference of thickness between the sheet metal and the frame rail. So kind of gonna be a slow and steady, steady job there. I got my tail light housings welded on now, so those look fine, they support my weight, so that's good. And uh, the next thing I have coming up here is I need to get the winch off and the bow rest off because they're going to blast this entire trailer. And so um, what I need to do is, is normally that's like a, a bolt, so uh, that's kind of a one use deal, it looks like a quick, quick uh, assembly deal. Um, and it, it wore out anyway, you can see it's leaving marks on the boat and then also the winch needs to come off, uh, so I'll get those unbolted now. All right, so I got the uh, <clears throat> bow rest all stripped out, and then I took the, the bunks off, which was easy and boring, and then also I went in and I cut off all of the U-bolts uh, uh, right there. I cut, cut all those shorter on all the way around the trailer. Um, now I need to move on to this rear axle and the brakes. I need to flip them to the top. And then second, um, I was gonna have to like flip the brakes and do all this craziness so that the bleeder would be on the top. But now I'm noticing as I get into this a little further, you can see right now the bleeder's on the bottom, uh, but that would be an easy change just to move the bleeder out and uh, put on top. So that shouldn't be the end of the world. I'm gonna try to kind of make this all work and we'll just see how it goes. All right, well I got my Brake line undone, flopped around to the other side, and then just really easy tacked on here. So you can see how the brake line snakes in through there under the spring, goes around, comes to this little block that was just tacked on there, and then around and underneath. And I'm pretty close to kinking right there. Ooh, I'm not crazy about that, that line right there, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, so I went to the parts store, um, kind of hoping for a configuration, something like that, which would be a flared end, double flare end, and then uh, a union between them. That would end up end up turning out something like that. Uh, but they had this sitting basically right there, which is a compression style fitting. And so uh, I'm actually gonna put this right in that location, cut those off um, even and straight, and, uh, and toss this guy in.